Now I've learned two things from this painful saga, which I want to share with you guys so you don't make a mistake like I nearly did. And it doesn't really matter what make or model car you are buying. Hello and welcome back to the Volks Wizard channel. Now a few weeks ago I posted what I thought would be the last video on my 981 generation Porsche Boxster GTS because I just put it up for sale and paid a deposit for its replacement. In that video I didn't actually tell you what I was buying instead in true YouTube style. I teased you by saying it was a particularly interesting make and model, it was in a particularly divisive colour and it had a particularly colourful past. Hmm. Well in today's video I'm going to explain to you why after all that I'm not buying that car through no fault of my own. I've been in the motor trade for over 20 years and I thought I'd seen it all, but the buying process for this car has taught me that I've still got a lot to learn. So there's a lot of interesting buying advice for you guys in this video, whatever make and model you're thinking of buying. But let's get the ball rolling by revealing what the car is that I didn't buy. Now, since that video posted where I revealed I was selling my Boxster GTS, I've really enjoyed reading your comments where you've guessed what car I'm going to replace it with. Some of you were, I think, pretty much bang on. Others were a long way off. But the clue is in the car I was selling, particularly because in that video I stated I had a brilliant 20 months with it. And I think I said it probably been the best car I'd ever owned. So a natural progression from that would be to buy another Porsche, just a better one. And the most obvious upgrade from a a Boxster GTS is to buy the Boxster Spider, which in the case of the 718 generation model is basically a Cayman GT4, slightly softer, which makes it better as a road car and it has a soft top. But because the Spider has got this sort of funny rear deck and it's designed to be a bit sleeker, unfortunately the roof, which is fully automatic on the normal Boxsters, requires some manual intervention. So unlike my Boxster and I think pretty much every other Boxster, you can't open or close the roof on the key and you definitely cannot do it while you're doing 30 miles an hour, which is such a fantastic feature that I really could not pay double for a Boxster Spider and lose that. Plus, I think I've had my fill of open top motoring with the 20 months with the Boxster GTS. So the car I wanted to replace it with was the car that I was originally looking to buy when I bought the Boxster GTS as a bit of a stopgap. And that car is a 718 Cayman GT4, which has been the darling of social media ever since it was launched in 2019. I didn't buy one at the end of 2021 because used car prices were going crazy post pandemic. And the GT4, even before that, rarely changed hands at below list price. But that was nearly two years ago and the world is a very different place today. I've been checking the Porsche used car locator regularly, I think while I've had my Boxster, and in recent weeks, there's been a distinct downward trend in GT4 prices. But until I found the car I nearly bought, there was nothing that really that ticked all my boxes. Then suddenly that car turned up and I was just blown away. What we had was a 2022 car, so it was much newer than everything else. They started about 20, maybe 2019, 2020s definitely. So it was less than half the age of those. It had £20,000 worth of options, including the lightweight bucket seats, club sport pack and ceramic brakes. Plus, it was in a very, very unusual colour. I'd never seen one in that colour before. And it was listed at £87,000, which was £10,000 less than its original list price. The good thing about the Porsche used car locator, unlike nearly every other place cars are advertised, including Auto Trader, is that it shows you how many owners a car has had. And in this case, it was just one owner, though it was very unusual to see a car listed on the Porsche website that is shown as that qualifying. And that generally means the car's been owned by a company, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but you kind of want to know what it was doing. I could see the registration number as well, which again is unusual for a lot of car adverts because they're, they're usually hidden in the photos. And the registration number began with an R, which doesn't necessarily guarantee it was owned by Porsche Cars GB, but there's a very, very high chance. Anyway, I googled the registration number and it didn't take very long to see that that car had been a, a demonstrator for the media. So basically a press car for Porsche Cars GB and it had done its 9,000 miles, you could say the hard way with a lot of track testing 
and it was a subject of numerous reviews from small YouTube channels to the big boys like Top Gear magazine. This wasn't ideal, but it didn't put me off because it's a Porsche GT car, so it's designed to be used like that. Also, every X press car goes through a very thorough checking and preparation process at Porsche Cars GB headquarters in Reading before it's put up for sale. And also it was being sold by Porsche West London, which isn't a franchise dealer like Zittner or JCT 600. It's actually owned and operated by Porsche Cars GB. And you would hope therefore it would uphold Porsche standards to perfection. Also, it comes with two and a half years warranty. So that's basically two years on top of the balance of the warranty which, you know, is one of the best warranties in the business. So yes, it's had a hard life, but you're kind of immune to any costs as a result of that for a very, very long time. Okay, let's quickly talk about that colour because it does need some explaining. It's basically a light metallic pink called Frozen Berry. And it's so rare, a lot of people assume it's from Porsche's paint to sample range where you can pay them £8,000 and they'll let you pick a colour from a much broader palette. You've probably seen it before because it was used on the Porsche Taycan, but for the 2022 model year, Porsche made it available to order on all 718 models for just £632. You either love it or hate it, and I'd imagine if you were sat down in a Porsche showroom about to order a GT4, most Porsche salespeople would discourage you from ordering it because most Porsche GT4 first owners were already thinking about how much money they could make when they were gonna sell that car, and why would you limit that if you pick it in a funny color? However, as a press fleet car, it was perfect because it photographs well and it draws a lot of attention. The only problem they've got is when they come to sell it, they need somebody a bit weird to uh, buy it off them. Well, I loved the way that car contrasted a slightly effeminate color with a really hardcore track ready spec because it had the club sport pack, so it had roll cage, harnesses, fire extinguisher and the ceramic brakes and the bucket seats. And being a bit cheaper than a GT4 in a normal color meant I could afford it, which was a big bonus. I genuinely love the color. While it's a classic Marmite color, a big fan of it is Matt Farah from the Smoking Tire YouTube channel. He ordered a 718 Boxster Spider in Frozen Berry, though he does have to spend quite a lot of his time defending that decision. If you love this color, great. I'm happy you love it. If you don't love it, go for yourself. Don't <laughs> care. I love it. I think it's fantastic. Okay, so you can probably tell I was really keen on this car because I love the spec and the color. And a bonus was I thought it would work well on the channel because it would be of interest to you guys. It wasn't brand new, so I could just get in it and use it and not worry about the odd chip. And I'd already planned a road trip for it to Italy in September. I made the Porsche Center an offer by email on a basically take it or leave it basis. And to my surprise, they took it, which on reflection was probably maybe a bit of a clue about what was about to take place. I was super excited buying a car from a Porsche main dealer because I'd been in their showrooms in the past to pick up trade cars and to buy parts. And I'd always aspired to be a proper retail customer. There was a lot of paperwork done by email before they actually took my deposit of 2,000 pounds. But I was okay with that because it proved that I was serious, I could afford the car, and I wasn't gonna drive it out of the showroom window. This was on a Tuesday, and because the salesperson was away on a training course, my appointment to view it wasn't until the following Saturday. I would have loved to have gone sooner than that but I figured I'd given them enough time to get the car ready and they could present it in perfect condition and I could you know, pay the balance and get basically my dream car. Unfortunately, that wasn't how it panned out. I was a bit surprised to be shown the car in the upstairs showroom. It was surrounded by other cars in relatively poor light. However, I was fine with that at the time because I was in the most prestigious Porsche dealership in the UK and I didn't think I'd need to give the car the full going over like I would do if say I just bought it from an auction. I just wanted to make sure I like the color in the metal and I could actually get comfortable in the bucket seats, which in both cases, thankfully, were the yes. One area I did need to check very carefully was the condition of the front end paintwork because there was footage of the car driving close to the car in front and Porsche are really prone 
to stone chips. So I thought the car would either have been quite chippy or it would have been painted. And as soon as I saw it, there was not one chip to be seen. The paintwork was like brand new. The bumper matched the bonnet and the bonnet matched the wings. So I thought there couldn't be any problems with colour match. They wouldn't have painted the wings. The orange peel was even consistent with the rest of the car and there were no defects. It was a really nice job, or at least it looked like it when you stand at the front of the car. I wanted to have a look under the bonnet lid because I wanted to check that the paintwork was purely for cosmetic reasons, not because the car had had some sort of front end impact. And this is where things started to go wrong. Firstly, the nuts that hold the bonnet lid to the hinges were all missing their paintwork. So clearly the bonnet had been off. It turns out it had been off for painting. It's much easier to prep a bonnet when it's off the car. So that was fine. When they put it back on, they could have touched in those nuts, but they hadn't. So that suggested a lack of attention to detail, as did the fact that the washer fluid grommet that the pipe goes through into the bonnet was just hanging there. It wasn't plugged into the bonnet. And then on my Boxster GTS, when I did some photos to sell it, I took a picture of the VIN sticker. It's a little black sticker. It's not very big, a couple of inches long, sits on the side of the bonnet. You can't see it with the bonnet down, but you can see it with the bonnet up. It's kind of important because it shows that that's the original bonnet. Well, on this car, it genuinely looked like it had been peeled off one bonnet and put on another one. So that got me thinking that maybe it had a new bonnet or something. I don't know, but you know, you can only take what you see at face value and it looked like it had a new bonnet. So what had happened with the car? I have to admit, I was a bit disappointed at this point, but I wasn't prepared to write the car off just yet. The salesman had promised me a copy of the Porsche GB preparation report when the car had come off the press fleet and had been made ready for sale. And this arrived five days later. And as suspected, it confirms that the front end had been repainted, but it said that the wings had been blended in as well. So you just colour up sort of the inner bit of the wing and then you don't put any colour down the side. This is really good practice, but it can still result in a mismatch because even though you don't apply any colour to the, the side of the wing on the outside of the car, applying new lacquer to it can actually alter its tone. I hadn't been able to check this on the first visit because of the light and because of the way the car was parked. So I made a second appointment to see it outside and it took me all of a minute to notice that the paint match on both wings was completely different to not only the door, but also the sills. It's hard to believe nobody in the dealership had noticed this before, but surely they weren't trying to sell me this car knowing that it was a long way from conforming to the Porsche approved used car guarantee of bodywork refinished to exacting Porsche standards. Well, I was prepared to give them the benefit of the doubt that they hadn't noticed this before. And I took the salesman up on his offer of a test drive while I was thinking about what to do next. This was quite interesting as well. We went out on the M4 and it 70 miles an hour as you get towards Heathrow Airport. And at that speed, suddenly there was like a real loud bearing noise coming from the back of the car. I thought it was a wheel bearing, but when I pressed the clutch, it stopped. I'd never driven a GT4 before, but this didn't sound right. It shouldn't be that different to my Boxster GTS. It's basically the same engine and that's super quiet at 70 miles an hour. That's what makes it a great cruiser. I pointed this out to the salesman and he said he thought it was induction noise, but at this point, it was academic anyway, because I wasn't sure I was buying the car. And unlike paintwork issues, anything like that could be sorted out under warranty. I've since found out that the car had a clutch at 4,000 miles. I can't guarantee that, but I have it from a reasonably good source. So if it had a clutch by 4,000 miles, the gearbox clearly had some stick as well. So it wouldn't surprise me if there was actually something wrong with the gearbox. Anyway. When we got back to the showroom, the salesman put me in front of the sales manager who gave me two choices. One of them was to have my deposit back and walk away. The other was to take the car as it is, but to have a discount on what we'd already agreed. They didn't want to get involved in rectification because they felt they might end up having to respray the whole car and it still wouldn't be right, which is quite likely because the color they sprayed the front end in wasn't actually 
frozen berry and I didn't like that colour. I wanted the proper frozen berry. I said to them, look, fair enough, I need to know how much it will cost me to put it right because I'll have to do it at some point. I couldn't sell it like this. So the next day I spoke to a couple of body shops that I trust and neither of them said they wanted to get involved in it. They just felt there was such a high chance of it never being to the standards that I need it to be. So I contacted the dealership and told them I wanted my deposit back and that was the end of my frozen berry dream. Now I expected Pinky to be sent back to Porsche GB at Reading where they'd done the paintwork and to be put right or if they couldn't be bothered just to send it to a car auction and wave goodbye there never to be seen again. What I didn't expect was it to be back on the Porsche used car locator the same day with no rectification work having been performed. This was annoying because they'd wasted a lot of my time with two trips to London to see a car that doesn't take a trained eye to tell that it should not be on sale at a Porsche main dealership. And they were looking like they wanted to waste somebody else's time as well. It makes me wonder now if the location they chose for me to see it on the first visit was deliberately chosen so I couldn't see the paint mismatch. I'll leave that for you to decide. The real irony here is that Porsche Retail Group own Porsche West London and they also own Porsche Reading, which is the Porsche centre that took my Porsche Boxster GTS in Partex back in December 21 and decided it wasn't good enough for them to retail so they just sent it to auction simply because it had a couple of chips and some easily sorted issues. Yet Porsche Retail Group seem intense on retailing Pinky, which not only has had a very, very hard life, which will be always all over the internet for everyone to see, but it's currently got really, really bad paintwork, which will either never be right or require a full respray to rectify something they don't appear to be prepared to do. Now I've learned two things from this painful saga, which I wanna share with you guys so you don't make a mistake like I nearly did. And it doesn't really matter what make or model car you are buying. Firstly, let's talk about press cars because they turn up at main dealerships on a regular basis in the Volkswagen Group. Quite often they have a very tempting spec, but the reality is they'll often exhibit more wear and tear than the average used car. And some of that you won't be able to see because it will be engine and gearbox. So unless it's a serious bargain, which it never will be because the seller will never tell buyers it's a press car, which would put a lot of them off, Unless it's a serious bargain, I'd move on and buy something else. To spot them, you need to become familiar with the registration number sequences that manufacturers use for their press fleet. And always, always Google the registration number of the car you're considering buying, as this can bring up some surprising information. If the car has a cherished number on it when, when it's presented for sale, then make sure you do a used car data report, find out the previous registration numbers, particularly the very first one, and make sure you Google those as well. Also, I'd assume buying from a Porsche main dealer would be a pleasurable and risk-free buying experience, but it transpires that wherever you buy a car from, you need to never let your guard down and never take anything you are told purely on trust. I expected more of Porsche West London because they are part of Porsche Retail Group and that's a wholly owned subsidiary of Porsche Cars GB and they're the people that make the rules that all the UK Porsche centres need to comply with. So you'd expect them to uphold the highest standards as they're effectively owned by the factory. But on reflection, I think that might be the problem because I suspect their dealerships aren't subject to the scrutiny that Porsche GB casts over their franchise dealers. So the GT4 search continues. I've already narrowed one down outside the Porsche dealer network, but the sales team communication leaves a lot to be desired and does not bode well. So wish me luck, guys. As ever, guys, thank you for watching this Vox Wizard video. Keep subscribing, keep commenting, and I'll see you for the next one very soon.